Hello and welcome. My name is Rainer Böhme and I teach information security at the Department of Information Systems of the University of Münster in Germany. This week we will explore how security economics can help organizations to manage their information security. You might have observed that managing and management are overloaded terms. When we use them, we mean a systematic and goal-oriented approach towards designing social and technical systems. This typically includes tasks such as definition of goals, information gathering and analysis, decision-making, that is choosing between alternatives, as well as controlling the outcome. In order to manage something, you need some freedom of action, a set of alternatives to choose from. If all relevant actions were predefined, we'd speak of implementation rather than management. We take a top-down approach to security management in this block. This segment starts with high-level strategies and we'll discuss how to implement them down to the level of operational security in the following segments. Also, the term strategy has several meanings. In the management literature, it often refers to high-level and long-term plans with substantial impact on the organization's success. In the context of game theory, the term has a more specific meaning. An action is called strategic if it anticipates the reaction of counterparts with diverging interest who act equally rational and strategic. Because many realistic attackers in cybersecurity scenarios are indeed strategic, game theory has become a popular analytical tool for studying the economics of information security. When we talk about management, we usually take the perspective of a single organization or perhaps a single department within a larger organization. This differs in one important aspect from a global or policy perspective taken in other segments of this course. A manager's objective is to maximize private benefit for his organization rather than utility for an entire ecosystem or society at large. There's nothing wrong with taking the selfish perspective for a moment. It is primarily the responsibility of policy to create a new environment where the sum of actions that result from private utility maximization supports a desirable social outcome. Now turning to cybersecurity. The action you choose as an organization largely depends on who you are. Therefore, we segment the various players in the commercial cybersecurity arena into four broad categories. Security providers, security consumers, the security industry, and the attackers. Indeed, building adversary models to study attacker motivations and strategies is an essential part of security economics quite as the research of attack technologies is part of security engineering. For now, let's focus on the defender roles. We call the parties who are in principle in the best position to shape the information security environment security providers. In simple terms, this is the IT industry. By contrast, security consumers are the parties who depend on the available information security environment. These are the IT industry's customers. And I have in mind businesses that deploy information technology to remain competitive rather than individual end users. Security providers, think of Silicon Valley, are characterized by IT being their strategic capital. They make money by developing this technology further, often following an aggressive growth strategy. Security consumers, think of Wall Street or Michigan, make money in some conventional business in mature markets and since the 1990s increasingly with the help of information technology. IT adoption boosts their efficiency so that they remain competitive. For security consumers, IT services have become a commodity that are goods without qualitative differentiation. For example, most banks cannot expect competitive advantage from a strategic differentiation in IT use. Everyone in the industry uses similar powerful office communication and ERP systems. Or as Nicholas Carr memorably wrote in 2003, IT doesn't matter. 
What is important to understand these two roles better is this. Neither security providers nor security consumers have a core competence in security. Security is one of many issues in their agenda, a fact that the security industry, our third segment, has learned to turn into a business. The security industry has built a core competence in selling security to customers in need. Security providers and consumers also differ in their demands for the security industry's products and services. The security strategy of security providers is primarily governed by the rules of information goods, exactly as Ross has explained earlier in this course. By contrast, the security investment decisions of security consumers mainly depend on the budget allocation, which again depends on a combination of the senior management's awareness and priorities, as well as the security manager's negotiation skills to create awareness and to make a case. As a rule of thumb, security provider security decisions are business-driven, whereas security consumer security decisions are budget-driven. What defines the security strategy for security provider? Recall that the economics of information goods create an environment with significant network externalities and economies of scale. The market rewards first movers with monopoly rents. At the same time, all expenses for the development of a software product are sunk that is not recoverable if your competitor wins the race. So it is prefer perfectly rational to ship today and fix tomorrow and to concentrate development efforts on end-user visible features in order to increase the likelihood of fast adoption. Avoid adding security features in the short term because they cost you time, money, and functionality. With an eye on the long term, make sure that you maintain the option to retrofit security in case you get lucky and become so successful that bad security negatively affects your reputation. For example, Microsoft spent quite a fortune in recovering from their initial decision to strip Unix-style access control for single-user personal computers. This decision backfired as PCs got connected to the internet and became, in fact, multi-user machines. What defines the security strategy for security consumers? Here I am going to enumerate three reasons for adding what I call real security and one reason to add what I call best practice security. Of course, you have got to do something if a lack of security creates direct losses to your own business. This includes fraud prevention for e-commerce, defenses against denial of service attacks if you've become a victim, or if your insecurity threatens strategic partnerships, such as peering arrangements for service providers who do not properly police their network. In simple terms, you add security for your own business. The second reason to add real security is, if a lack of security harms your customers to an extent that it generates indirect cost, for example, through reputation loss and customer disaffection. The need for action is highest. If you're lagging behind your industry or security incidents at your organization have become public. Also make sure that you communicate your improvements. In simple terms, reason two is when you add security for your customers. The third reason to add real security is less charitable. I'm talking of cases where security supports business model, for example, by amplifying customer lock-in, digital rights management, intentional incompatibility, and Ross's earlier example of cryptography in printer cartridges belong to this category. For comparison, reason three is when you add security against your customers. In all three cases, your organization has an interest in that the security mechanisms are not only efficient, cheap, but also effective in thwarting the attacker's intentions. But not all security investments are made for one of these reasons. A great share of security spending adds what I call best practice security. These are controls acquired for the sake of being compliant with industry standards. Having them in place, regardless how effective they are, help senior managers to disclaim liability if something goes wrong. For us, it is important to identify best practice security, not in order to fight it, but to understand motivations and decisions in practice. Again, it is perfectly rational for organizations and their managers alike 
to invest in best practice security. You ought to point to policy if you want the standards require is far away from what is common sense or good for society.